Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. Biggest names in cryptocurrency right now. Solana ecosystem is going nuts. Stay tuned for a video on the channel about the Solana ecosystem coming up in the next couple of days. Today, we're going to dive into Ethereum hitting all-time highs. We've got some bullish news from Ethereum, or at least on Ethereum. And of course, Bitcoin as well. More bullish news, but we are looking like we're hitting that resistance level, which we've identified a few days ago. So stick around for that as we dive in. Now, if you find value from the content, let me know. Hit that like button down below. Bell notification icon after you've hit the subscribe button so that you can get here before the scammers arrive and enjoy the comments section without the nonsense. All right, let's dive in. Coin market cap says we are at two trillion dollars yet again. Bitcoin. 55,000. We've just fallen short of 55,000, but still holding our $1 trillion market cap. Ethereum, the big player here, 300 billion, getting very close to being worth one third of Bitcoin. I think we might see a 50% value of Ethereum to Bitcoin. Now, for new people, that does not mean the Ethereum price is going to be half the price of Bitcoin. You've got to understand market caps. And there's a few people who are just new to investing and don't really understand that. But essentially, we just want to see this price increase at a percentage that is going to replicate this being half of the market cap. Well, that sounded like a complete mouthful. Essentially, 500 billion if Bitcoin stays at 1 trillion. That's all we're looking for here. Moving on, Uniswap, 20 billion. It's had a reasonably good surge. Not quite sure we're going to see massive gains from this point. I think this is just leading up into the release of version 3 but I'm long-term bullish. What I'm saying here is I think we might see a buy the rumor, sell the news type event. We're waiting on the news, gets launched, price may fall. Let's see what happens from that one, but that's that's a possibility. Cardano looking all right, $1.30. It's still trending in its range of $1 to $1.40, looking good. Polkadot also has seen its day. It's just fallen off its peak. Chainlink still accumulating in this $30 region. VeChain, you guys love that. Still at 20 cents, had a bit of a fall over the last seven days. Solana, the favorite here, 36% up in the last seven days. And of course, the ecosystem, which we are covering on the channel very, very shortly. All right, let's move across to the fear and greed because this has spiked up over the last day. Yesterday, we're at 50 neutral. Day before was an absolute scare for everyone around 27. Now, greed is at 59. Well, I'm calling it greed because it says here, we're at fear and greed. This is just looking at how bullish people are of the space. Bitcoin has risen up to 55,000. We're at 59 on the greed. Last time we were at 55,000, I remember it being in this region of the 70s, maybe even touching on extreme greed. So I still think we are kind of fearful in the market that this time at 55,000 might not be a stronghold. Obviously, we're going to wait and see on that one. But first time we break through 55, everything was looking much greedier than it currently is. Coin market cow, Cardano Africa is coming up. I've got a theory that this is not such a big event for people. I don't think people care that much about what's going on here. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments if you think this is a big event for Cardano or would a bigger event be a hard fork or an upgrade to the system? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, Poker City is on the coin market cow cap as well. NFT marketplace release. They said they were doing that. That's the end of May. So this is the big thing for them. Certic audit. So the audit is uh, coming through as well, which is a pretty big thing for most projects. You want to see them audited. Otherwise, what are they? Scams. EIB to register bonds on Ethereum. So this is a European investment bank. Don't worry about all of this other nonsense around here. Basically, all we're looking at here is the banks are going to be registering digital bonds on Ethereum. That's that's all we need to see here. And it's just under adoption news. Big banks are overseeing the sale. The sale is managed by banking giants, Goldman Sachs, Banco Santander and Societe Generale. That's my French. Anyway, we'll move on. Central Bank of Iran also said that the bank's license money changes can use cryptocurrency mined by authorized miners in Iran to pay for imports, according to the Financial Tribune. Now, I think this sort of news is going to become more popular amongst other governments and obviously central banks as well. Now, if that does make its way into the system, which probably will, then they're going to be outlawing anyone who doesn't 
uh, comply with the bank or the government's way of doing things in cryptocurrency. So I look at this in a way that makes me think I need to get more of my money into crypto sooner rather than later. Because if the government outlaws something, they don't like a particular bank or an exchange or the way that we do things with cryptocurrency, then they could potentially make it illegal. And I don't want my money being illegal. It's not the way life should be. And essentially, if I am working for my money, I should be able to do what I want with my cash. The same goes for you guys as well. I don't think it should be dictated by a government. Now, that's just my opinion. You guys have come here for the news. Let's keep rolling on. Publicly listed game maker Nexon allocates $100 million into buying Bitcoin. So this, I hadn't seen this as big news anywhere else, but $100 million, not small, not huge in the scheme of things when we see Tesla by 1.5 billion, but $100 million still coming in, 1,717 Bitcoin with a total cost of $100 million, average price of $58,000 Bitcoin after expenses and fees. So currently their value is at 95 million. So they've lost 5 million, 5%. Nexon said that this allocation is less than 2% of his total cash and cash equivalents as of December 2020. This is the interesting part to this purchase. This is from the CEO. Our purchase of Bitcoin reflects a disciplined strategy of protecting shareholder value and for maintaining the purchasing power of our cash assets. In the current economic environment, we believe Bitcoin offers long-term stability and liquidity while maintaining the value of our cash for future investments. Long-term stability and liquidity coming from a CEO that's just thrown in $100 million, which makes up less than 2% of their total cash. Pretty big. Now, this isn't in the US, but it is headquartered in Japan, and it was founded in South Korea. So it's not a small company either. This is looking pretty solid. And what I look at here is that if this CEO is saying this, then there's probably pressure in other companies as well to do the same thing, which is pretty much... Elon Musk's reasoning as well, you know, to be purchasing some Bitcoin for Tesla. Gemini ties with MasterCard for crypto rewards credit card. This is going to be coming out in the US. So more crypto credit cards. We have a lot of debit cards. Now we've got some credit cards uh, and it looks like you will possibly get some cash back in uh, Bitcoin. Half of all US voters will own Bitcoin by year end as BTC spreads like wildfire. So Michael Saylor on it again. The US dollar is going to be the big winner from the spread of Bitcoin. Five billion people are going to have a mobile wallet on their phone. The big losers are going to be the bottom 50 countries. They're going to lose their currency privileges, all the collapsing economies in Africa, South America, and Asia. They won't keep their currencies. People will switch over to the dollar. So essentially, Bitcoin spreading. He thinks 5 billion people are going to have access to this because they have mobile wallets. If those countries lose their currency, then it might also work out for them that they'll have a more stable currency as well and it won't be dictated by the governments. Something to keep uh, note of here, especially if this happens. This is huge, you know, there's a sort of big, big ideas from Michael Saylor. So you can be bullish on Bitcoin and on the US dollar, according to Michael Saylor. You know, who am I to say it's not possible? Let's see what happens. Uh, Turkey to regulate Bitcoin exchanges after fiasco reports. All I want to say with this is, if we keep getting scams, then that just gives government the reason to come out and start slamming down regulations on things. So scams like Ponzi schemes, we won't name them here, but there's a lot of those. This is probably the, the bad side to all of this. You've got scammy exchanges, scammy cryptocurrencies, government comes out, we need to save the people, slaps down some regulations. There you have it. So that's it. That's it for this one here. Something to keep in mind. Over to the options, we got $4 billion worth in Bitcoin options set to expire on Friday. Is this a bullish or a bearish scenario for, for Bitcoin? I don't think it really matters all that much. I think it's talked up a hell of a lot more than it needs to be. I'm mentioning it because you probably see it in the markets or at least in the news over the next couple of days. And I don't think it's going to pay, uh, play that much of an impact long term, definitely not long term, maybe short term. So if it does drop, I think it's a good place to purchase some more Bitcoin on the dip. If it rises, so be it. It's a short term piece of the puzzle. Back to Korea. Now, this one I'm looking at because uh, we've got young Koreans turn to crypto as alternative for creating wealth. 
20 and 30 year olds reportedly leaving the workforce to pursue riches in crypto trading. Does that look like your lifestyle? Is that what you're going to be doing? Leaving the workforce to make money in crypto? Day trading is probably one of the riskiest ventures to pursue, especially in a bull market when there's just a short period of time to be creating that wealth. And if you have no skill, it's a difficult one to win at. They just say here, I face the reality of being unable to afford my own home, no matter how hard I have uh, I save up my salary said anonymous worker cited in the report, there's no way than cryptocurrency investments for me to accumulate wealth. Now, just add on to the end of this, there are other ways. I think a lot of people believe this, so there are no other ways. Other ways are to go out and provide value to your community, provide value to people online, create something that people need and go and service the people. This is not directly cryptocurrency related, but if you have this fear and this need and this want to make massive riches from cryptocurrency very, very quickly, generally it doesn't work out. I wanna see you guys succeed, put your money in if you're willing to invest any of your cash and do it for the long haul. And if you happen to strike it lucky and get rich quick, fantastic. But just look at it in terms of a long haul game because the reality is most people lose in the short term. I'm mentioning it because that's pretty much this stage of the cycle. Everyone is coming in even later and trying to make big riches very quickly. But stick around for the entire bull market and the bear market and you'll have so much experience. Let's look at, at the charts. My favorite to begin with, Solana, looking like it's having a little bit of a pullback, which is why I have DCA'd into it again. 10%, 11%, call it that, down from the high. So technically, you kind of have an 11% discount from the high. Now, if this keeps coming back, sweet. I'll keep buying more and more Solana. If we come all the way back, I'll find some way to get some more cash. Solana is very high on my list. Like I said, we've got a video coming out on Solana in the next few days, just finalizing the information and the research on that uh, after this video. Serum is another big one in the space that has burst through the resistance levels at eight bucks. On high volume, remember, always look at the volume. Volume is the basically the lifeblood of the market. It's going to tell you what's going on, um, just not the price, but you definitely need the volume and, of course, time. So look at this breakthrough. We're having a little bit of a pullback, which is perfect. That structure, if we were to get just another day or so back down, that looks beautiful. That's like a nice looking setup. And I'll probably purchase a little bit more once I get off this video but solana is definitely one that i dca into so let's look at bitcoin as well because that's probably the biggest one at the moment especially with the potential resistance at 56 you know we've been looking at this and the 56 comes from our fib remember we look at 50 percent on the fibs amazing hits it like clockwork and we've just come off the major 50% as well. So if you guys were asking about this on Twitter, this is what we're looking at here, miners and major moves. If you can identify these, you got three steps ahead of the market who don't even know how to read a chart. If you wanna know more, there's a free newsletter that comes out once every two weeks. So drop your email address down below. There's a link there, you'll see it. Join free newsletter about cryptocurrency, trading and investing. If you wanna know more, come across to Twitter as well. Um, my Twitter link is down below. Instagram link is down below. I'll be doing Q&A over there after I pop this video up. You guys can join in and learn and ask more questions over there as well. But for Bitcoin, basically all we're following here is the, uh, the resistance at 56K. That's what we're following, waiting to see if we get a little bit of a pull back down to about 52 or if we're going to push through into our next resistance level of 58. The main point here that we want to see is a break of this bar. So this massive volume big down day. That was the day that we published a video on a Sunday of last week and got in just before the crash, letting you know that there was a big sign here that we we're about to crash. Now, this bar is the critical bar to get above and close above. So the price on that is 60,433. This is just Wyckoff theory. So if we can get above that, that is giving us a lot more strength to the market. Bitcoin dominance has just broken through 50% yesterday. It only just only slightly 49.93 and today we're just holding up again so we're starting to slow on this dominance uh, maybe we're going to see a little bit of a flush out of the alts maybe we're going to see bitcoin rise either way if this happens then bitcoin's dominance is obviously going to go up if it doesn't go up then we're probably going to get a flush out a little more of bitcoin more money going into the alts so 
let's wait and see on this one. But this is basically what we've known for many months now, that this is just going to continue to bleed out. Now, big one is Ethereum. Before we wrap up, ETH USD $2,625 at the moment, but we did just cross $2,700. So it is lightning on the volume. We really want to see this hold, get some nice strong closes. We're only five hours into this trading day. So ideally, we want to see some closes at least above these levels here. That's your 2,500. Some closes above that gives strength to the market and we can accumulate above this level here. So it's another reaccumulation phase for uh, Ethereum. These bars here, this one here helps me see that it's probably going to happen that we should get an accumulation above that 24-ish level. Now, these are just rough ideas at the moment, but I'm still bullish provided we stay above these levels where all these closes are at that 23 to 24 level because we got a big volume on this spike down, which means there was a lot of buying happening between 2000 and about 2300. So people are seeing a lot of value in Ethereum at those levels. That's why I'm still very bullish on Ethereum. ETH BTC, the other big one, still climbing slowly, probably going to get a pullback at some point just because of how slowly it's climbing and the volume dropping. If this happens to be it and the volumes all dried up, then we're going to get a big move either way. Main thing here is that the volatility has decreased on the ETH Bitcoin pairing and I'm looking for a break either way. So that could be very good for ETH USD if we do get a big break to the upside. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Got a lot of news out. Looked at Solana, which is coming up on the channel as well. A deeper dive into the ecosystem. The big stuff with Solana is that it looks like it could take away some of the gains from Binance, from Binance Smart Chain. Their chain is cheaper, faster. I guess you kind of get it putting into that category as more superior. They also have IDOs coming up, which is massive. And uh, a lot of people are going to get very, very excited to jump on board those IDOs and make a ton of crypto money. So I think those two narratives alone for Solana are really going to skyrocket that price. And then when people figure out the other projects that come with Solana, those things are also going to move as well, which is why we looked at Serum earlier in this video. Thanks once again, guys. You know where to find me. Instagram, Twitter, obviously on YouTube. So subscribe and like the video up, hit the bell notification icon, join the free newsletter down below. You can catch me also within the 12 month membership, the investor accelerator. That link is also below if you want to join in and learn how to trade and invest cryptocurrencies. And I'll see you on Twitter. But until then, remember, have more fun to get more done.